Hey, everybody. I'm about to bust into some barrel seagrass. Hopefully, it doesn't have sea fleas. Whew. That was freaking me out. Giddy up. All right. So are you ready for this? Uh, barrel seagrass is a rye whiskey finished in Martinique rum, Madeira, and apricot brandy barrels. I mean, they they should have gotten like uh, what, what I'm like. Why couldn't you have gotten a sherry and port barrel to add into it? I mean, man, they're getting really extravagant with their uh, uh, with these things. So these would have been rye that was distilled. Ready for this? Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, and Canada. So, let's see. We have a shitload of things going in to make this one product. It's called Barrel Seagrass. You can find it on the shelves between $75 and $90. Now, I have tasted this, I believe, in competition. But I have not done a review on it. And I get a lot of questions about this one. So I figured I would give it a taste. Hmm. So a little bit about Barrel. So this is a company that is, has uh, really been coming on strong the last few years. They are a blending house. So they take stocks from other countries and distilleries and they blend them together to make their own profile. And, you know, they went from just doing bourbon and then to rye to rum. And now they're just, you know, they're kind of like, they're, they're kind of a thought leader in this. And so this is a, a unique occasion where we're seeing three styles of barrels in here. Now, Martinique, uh, that is in that is a, an island in the Caribbean. And they basically make uh, rum, R-H-U-M. And it is uh, fresh, um, fresh sugar cane juice that they make it out of. So the, the rum that you get from Martinique... It's going to be very different than the flavor profile that you would get from uh, the rum in Barbados or Jamaica. So so that's that one. And Madeira, of course, is a fortified wine that is oh, so good when it's like 40 years old and stuff. It's so oh, good. And then apricot brandy barrels. Now that is a category you don't hear a lot about. But my, um, my now deceased uh, grandmother-in-law... When, when anybody was sick in the house, she would bring over uh, apricot brandy. I'm like, this will make you better. Not bourbon, uh, not rum, not, not, not scotch. Apricot brandy. She was Lebanese and had this uh, belief that apricot brandy made you, made you better no matter what you had. And she had a lot of stuff. Of course, she lived to be in her mid-90s. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that apricot brandy might do the trick the next time I'm sick. But uh, anyway... So a lot going on here with this rye in terms of how they made it. Let's see if it stands up to all that's on the label. Here we go. Okay, I definitely, uh, I definitely smell the apricots. Uh, definitely smell the apricot forward stuff. I smell some cotton candy machine, some cracker jacks, and a big waft of rum. Like, and this is not the kind of rum that I would normally smell it from. Uh, uh, from Martinique. Well, this has got a lot going on here. Oof. In a word, this is complex. Um, this is one where this is a this is a straight sipper. You put it in your glass. You put your feet up by a fire. You're with your buddies or your wife or your significant other. And you're just talking about what's going on in life. And you're, you're, you're nursing this glass for a good hour. This has uh, a lot going on. And I'd like to tell you, you know, it's, it's, it's all things that are familiar to American whiskey, but they're really not. You know, this is really skewing toward a lot of uh, a lot of the brandy and and um, and the Martinique flavor profiles. Um, what they have done here with this cast combination is create a whole whole another layer of 
flavors. So at the top, there's a really stark uh, rye toast, okay? And then like an orange marmalade, um, you know, like you get in a hotel, a really nice orange marmalade. Lots of the apricot kind of nutty notes. Um, man, there's just so much going on here. Like, I mean, I'm finding it difficult to put all this into words. Mm. And then there's a boatload of like pepper spices. I'm talking like chilies, like really good, like um, hatch chilies out of New Mexico. It's just beautiful. This is a this is a beautiful expression. It really is. I don't I don't know how else to put this, but it, it's not sweet. It's complex, um, and even that like that orange marmalade kind of skews on that like the the bright the the brightness of the of the peel um and the sweetness is just a touch so this is a complex a lot of spice to it uh, a lot of flavors and a rye whiskey that you'd never think you would taste so this is gorgeous and i'd, I'd, I'd put this up with pretty much a lot of things i tasted this year so this is a if you're into uh exploring your palate you know going after different flavor profiles barrel seagrass is the way to go but if you're kind of like accustomed to the american whiskey profile and you know in your mind rye whiskey is one or two different styles or flavors stay away from this if you're a bourbon fan and you hate scotch i don't think you'll like this at all and i only say that because if you're a bourbon fan you're into sweetness and scotch typically is not overtly sweet like bourbon. So I think you need an open mind coming into this particular product. So if you're just a staunch bourbon fan, you like sweet, 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 stay away from this. If you are a rye fan and you believe that rye whiskey should taste like everything from MGP or a handful of Kentucky rye whiskeys, stay away from this. But if you have an open mind about what whiskey should taste like and what it can taste like, this is, uh, I think this product is opening some new grounds with the barrel finishes. And as I have stated many, 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 many times, I love the use of barrel finishes in American whiskey. I do not, however, like to see bourbon be the main word and label at the very front. I'm like, bourbon should be a back label kind of descriptor. It should not be the driving category, especially since they are not approved federally as bourbon. That being said, we're looking at a rye whiskey here, and I don't need to get off on a tangent, one of my tangents about barrel finishes in bourbon. But that's going to do it for this tasting. Spend your own money. Taste for yourself. Uh, don't just listen to me or any other critic. You know, Make up your own mind, and that's the whole point of, of tasting is learn for yourself. Use others to educate, but make your own decisions. And that's going to do it for me this week, folks. Be safe out there. Remember... Vodka sucks, unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers, everybody.